Let's go over the composition of the interface that we have here with our Techo Logic next. Uh, first, up in the top section here, we have the main console. Uh, this will have many different sections that we will get into uh, in a little bit. Uh, next, in the center section here, is the layout section. Uh, you can see there are several different tabs uh, that we have access to be able to change. Uh, next, we will see the live events area. Uh, this will be the area where we will get the live events from the analytics, uh, input-output systems, access control information, as well as any recorded information that we want to be able to access. Over on the left-hand side, we see our side panels. This is going to be everything from our device list. Uh, we see our device properties, and we can also go into uh, PTZ controls here as well. Now let's go back up to the main console. Uh, we have three different environments. We have live environment, we have recorded environment, and then we have configuration environment. Uh, switching between these will allow us to be able to either access all the recorded information or to be able to set up servers, cameras, uh, or analytics, um, or other types of devices. Uh, the next area is our layouts area. Uh, this is where we will have our full screen, or you can do a layout to a new window. Uh, so you can actually do dual monitors, multiple monitors with separate layouts. Here we can actually run uh, or, or stop the patrol. Uh, that allows the cameras to go from uh, one layout to the next, to the next, to the next, and we can set presets there. We can also add another additional layout, create a new layout, and we can delete the current layout that we're on. We can duplicate the, the layout that, uh, that we have created, or we can rename them. The next section is the channel section. Um, here I can actually save an image of, of capture of the video. Uh, I can print that image. I can lock that image in place or at least lock that uh, camera into that viewing grid. And then I can digitally pan, uh, digitally zoom in and out. So you can actually see the show, uh, the detections, ignored zones, that sort of thing that lights up as well as violation details. We'll get into more of these specifics when we get into uh, the analytics setup. And then also privacy zones, we can either turn them on or turn them off. The next area is going to be where we have our PTZ controls, some PTZ uh, information. And if I switch back over to the PTZ, you can see that this first one enables the virtual joystick, either enable it or disable it. You can see the crosshairs in the middle of the screen here. Uh, that tells me that it's a PTZ. I can turn that off, so then I will be able to control my PTZ through my left and right up and down buttons, as well as my zooming in and out buttons here. Uh, if I would rather do that with the mouse, then I can turn that on, and now I can control the PTZ movement with my mouse. Uh, also next to it, you'll see a dome PTZ presets. Uh, we can set in several different presets here, which we'll go into at a later date. And then you can also set in uh, PTZ sequences, so we can go on tour, you can set one tour or another, depending upon daytime, nighttime, and set those even by schedule. Uh, but this gives you the, the ability to turn it on or off uh, from the main screen. Over here you will see uh, what we call our analytics tools. So the process view, if I click on that, you'll see that it went black. That's what the computer sees. There's a difference between the background and the foreground. Since there's no difference between the two, it's showing a black screen. Uh, my mixed area, it'll actually show a what we call a green blob uh, as we see live view moving. If I choose the analysis details and I check mark those, that now lights these up. So now I have the ability to uh, turn on the perimeter so I can watch an object and it'll give me the perimeter, perimeter information. Uh, here it'll set the, the area information. This is a combination of the two. Dimension ratio gives me perimeter and area. This gives me my speed in pixels per second. My bounding box around the actual object so I can see exactly how big or small that bounding box is. As well as the center of gravity on the object. I can see where exactly the center of gravity is depending upon whether I have a top down view or a side view or depending upon what angle I have. This one here is the tracks shows me from the object where it comes from and where it goes to through the field of view. Now these can be changed if you were to right click on the the main area up here, you can turn any one of these on or off. So for instance, I'll go ahead and turn off the uh, PTZ control environment, the presets, and the sequences. You can see how that actually changes my setup. 
And over in the device list, uh, we, we see everything from the servers. If I go down into the tree menu here, I can see my uh, video channels, my input-output devices, and maps. If I expand down into my video channels, I now see all of my different cameras. If I click on one of these cameras, down into the device properties, you will see a JPEG image, and it will give you some basic information about that particular camera. The input-output devices will be the same concept. I go down here to this particular input-output device. This is an Ethernet input-output. Uh, if I scroll down here, we have one that's set up as an output for a beacon. If I click on that, you can see down in the device properties, it gives me some basic information. I now have the ability to turn off or on from this particular setup. Now you'll see the exact same thing in the maps. If there are maps, if there were maps located in this, then you would see a list of maps going down below here. And again, by clicking on that map in the device property, you would see a JPEG image of what that map shows.